Miss Hicks, I told you I wasn't to be disturbed. I know, but Mr. Duncan insists on seeing you. Well, tell him to wait a minute. I didn't know Duncan was back in the South. Well, as I was saying, Bob, the lower courts may... Why, Alan. Mr. Parsons, I quit. Oh, now, Alan, you must... I uh... quit. Mr. Parsons, I've been with this firm for a good many years. I've never shirked an assignment yet. But these Pembertons are too much for me. Pembertons? Oh, no, sit down, Alan, sit down. <laughs> Yes, the Pembertons are the people who own the property of the Westchester Hunt Club trying to buy. Oh, yes. The club offered quite a substantial price, as I remember. Seemed a very simple matter. A very simple... There are eight heirs to the property. All I had to do was to get their signatures to the deed. Sounds very simple, doesn't it? I quit. Oh, sit down, Alan. Now, sit down. You're overwrought. You take a rest. I'm going to take a rest, Mr. Parsons. I'm going to a sanitarium for six months, for a year. Somewhere, anywhere, I'll never again hear the name of Pemberton. They're mad, I tell you. They're mad. Now, Alan, Mr. Pemberton's a famous scientist. Maybe a bit eccentric, but... A bit eccentric. Mr. Hilton, listen to me, please. Three months ago, I was a well man. Happy, laughing, carefree. My appetite was good. Then I was assigned to clear the title to the Pemberton property. Mr. Hilton, I ask you, what was the obvious thing to do first? Correspond with them. Just so. I corresponded with them. If you can call it corresponding, to write over a hundred different letters without receiving one word in reply. I wrote mild, imploring letters. I wrote stern, peremptory letters. No answer. They never answered? Not one word. What would you have done next, Mr. Hilton? Get in touch with them personally. Precisely. I did just that. But it's not as simple as it sounds. They're a much-traveled family. I chased down two old maid aunts in Connecticut. I pursued Mr. Herbert Pemberton to Boston. The old maids wouldn't answer the door. Herbert threw a paint pot at me. It seems I disturbed his mood while he was painting. They do seem a strange lot, but calm down, Alan, you're quivering. I heard most of the family had gone to Wakem. I followed them. Oh, what people. Mr. Parsons, I feel like a fool. I've been on this assignment for six months, and as yet I haven't even broached the subject to any one of them. I think it better all around if I just resign and go away. Oh, calm yourself, Alan. You take a rest. We'll give this assignment to someone else. We'll put someone else on the trail of the Pembertons. Poor fellow. I feel for him. Let's send Henry McMorrow. <laughs> oh, I know it sounds silly, J.P., but think it over a minute. Henry, he's so lackadaisical. These people will wake him up. Come to think of it, he might be just a man. Yes, Mr. Parsons. Miss Hicks, get Mr. McMorrow for me. Yes, sir. Alan, you go home and get a rest. Poor McMorrow. I feel sorry for him. <laughs> Wait until he meets Junior. Junior? Yes, the youngest Pemberton child. Ten years old, in years, but a prodigy. A prodigy? Yes, he's already graduated from high school, with the highest scholastic averages ever made by a high school student. At ten years of age? Yes, he's ready to enter Harvard at ten, mind you, and reads, writes, and speaks 12 languages, including the ancient Egyptian. You just go on home, Alan, and take a nice long rest. Thank you, I will. Mr. McMorrow has left for the day. His secretary says he will be in Central Park feeding the pigeons until 5 o'clock. After that, he usually goes to the aquarium. Well, have Jones get hold of him and explain the Pemberton matter thoroughly. And get reservations on the night train for Aiken. And have McMorrow at the depot on time. I'll meet him there with the papers and give him his last-minute instructions. Yes, sir. The aquarium, feeding pigeons. If those Pembertons are really crazy, Henry will feel right at home. <laughs> Less than two minutes. Where can he be? Jones will find him, Mr. Parsons. Jones always finds him. He knows his habits. His habits. The habit of having no sense of responsibility. The habit of always being late. He's a fine young fellow. He's been spoiled by too much money, too many advantages. He needs some incentive. Incentive? Well, here he comes. I knew Jones would find him. Oh, 
Hello, Mr. Parsons. I'm all out of breath. That's a peanut brittle. No, no, Henry. Now, your pullman is up ahead, and I've sent your baggage on. Now, the documents are all here. I hope you realize how important this is to us. Sure, but I don't think it's so difficult. I go to Aiken, South Carolina, have the Pemberton family sign the papers, and then bring them back here. But it may not be so simple. We've written Pemberton time and time again. We've had no reply to our letters. Well, you know how those famous signs are. Our client, the Westchester Hunt Club, is very anxious to clear the title of this property. And I expect you to get results. The papers are as good as signed. Well, now, here are your tickets, Henry. The best I can do on such short notice is a lower. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. I'll do my best. Now, one more thing, Henry. In the three years you've been with us since your father died, I can't say that you set the world on fire. Well, I'm willing to admit that, but it isn't entirely my fault. Look at the unimportant cases I've been given. Well, you've got your chance now. <laughs> if I don't come through, you can kick me out of the firm. I'll spend the rest of my days in Central Park feeding the pigeons. I'll remember that. <laughs> Wait a minute. The reason I'm sending you on this particular train is that Miss Antoinette Pemberton, the daughter of the man we're trying to do business with, is aboard. She's on the way to join her family at Aiken. Get acquainted with her if you can. As good as done, Mr. Parsons. Goodbye. You got nothing to worry about. Goodbye, Jones. Goodbye, Gil. No, boys, I think he'll put this over all right. I have a hunch he'll come back with the papers all signed. The papers. He's forgotten them. The briefcase. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Oh, well. Say, did Clementine sleep here last night? What? Clementine. She likes to sleep in a different bed every night. No, no. Go away. Go away. Are you sure she isn't here? Yes, I am. Go away, go away. You prevaricator! What is this? Look out! Oh. Clementine, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Take that away. Son, wait, Sonny, get, get it away. Take it away, son. I... What is this? Porter, what time is it? 5 a.m., sir. Oh, 5 o'clock. Will you call me as soon as the dining car opens? Yes. And listen, if you see any stray animals, I don't want any. Animal? Yes, I don't want any. No. Yes, sir. Orange juice, black coffee, and eggs, Benedict. Thank you. Morning. Oh, you again? Good morning, young man. <clears throat> you taking this trip all alone? They do things so much better on the continent. There, a waiter would never dream of asking impertinent questions. Pineapple juice, shredded wheat, pancakes, buttered toast, marmalade, and coffee. Say, you're a member of the Sig Beta Phi. Yeah. It's one of the most interesting of the Greek letter fraternities. Founded in 1778 by, wait a minute, Jupiter Claypool Adams. Say, you know a lot about Sig Beta. When you grow up and go to high school, are you going to join? I have graduated from high school. Oh, I see. Uh-oh. Waiter, serve me over there. Here you are, sir. Eggs Benedict. Ah, Eggs Benedict. Will you go away? There's an interesting story about that dish. All right, all right. They say that Napoleon the second chef, Benedict Chaminard, while slightly on the influence of grog, poured the hollandaise sauce on the eggs instead of the asparagus. Yes, yes. Napoleon enjoyed the dish and named it Eggs Benedict. <laughs> you don't say. Putting half an olive on top of each egg wasn't done until much later. Yes, that's very funny. <laughs> Remarkable how much they resemble a dead man's eyes. Yes. <laughs> huh? Oh. I, I don't think I'm hungry. Waiter! Cancel my order! My briefcase! It's imitation leather. Why, why, you little brat, I ought to wring your neck. No! 